So as we learn to figure out formulas for ionic compounds, I'm going to show you a strategy that I think is really helpful because most of you are like me, you're visual people. And so when you can see it kind of worked out in front of you visually, it's going to click a little bit better. So I'll show you this strategy here, a couple examples of how we can use uh, some diagrams to help us determine what the formulas will be. Okay. So again, just a reminder that um, ionic compounds are made from a metal bonding with a nonmetal. Metals are things with low numbers of outer electrons. They're going to try to get rid of that few number of electrons. And the nonmetals are atoms that have a lot of outer electrons, and they're going to acquire however many more they need so that they have a total of eight. Okay, And this is why that bonding happens, because of the transfer of the electrons from the metal over to the nonmetal. So let's just use an example here. Example number one will be barium chloride. When we write the name like that, we're identifying what the metal element is. It's barium, number 56 on the periodic table. And we won't find chloride on the periodic table, because remember with the nonmetals, we change the ending to IDE, so it's actually chlorine, um, but you'll be able to tell what the nonmetal is because it's a very similar name to, um, to what you see here for the second word. So the strategy here involves drawing little Lewis dot diagrams for each of these ions, okay? Have yourself plenty of space, and this doesn't have to be, you know, super neat or whatever, but you just got to make sure you represent everything properly. So... Just a reminder that to figure out what you're going to draw on a barium atom is it's the outermost electrons. Whichever electrons are in the outermost or the farthest out energy level. And on a periodic table, you can find it here. Barium has a lot of electrons, 56 of them, but there's only two. You see this number here, two? That's the very last number in the list. That tells you how many of them are in the outermost energy level. That happens to be the sixth level for barium. So we'll show two. Doesn't really matter where you show them, just make sure they're obvious like that. And then with chlorine, it's over here in the nonmetal area. So it's got two, eight, seven. So seven is the number of outer electrons that it has. So we'll represent that this way. Now Using this little method, it's actually best if you leave an opening, like on chlorine, so you got one spot open here. Um, if it's over next to the barium, it kind of helps you with your little drawing. So now what we want to do is represent what's going to happen when these try to form ions. Because remember, neither of these atoms is particularly happy right now. They're happy only if they have a full outer energy level. So with the metals like barium, they have to get rid of a few. So if it's got less than four, it will be getting rid of those. So that's these two. But chlorine is so close to having eight that it's not going to get rid of any. It's going to try to acquire or gain one more. So this is how they kind of cooperate. This electron right here, and this is what we do. We just kind of represent it transferring over and kind of filling in that little hole there. Now, that makes chlorine really happy, right? Because it's now gone from 7 to 8. Good job. However, barium is not happy yet. It still has another electron it hasn't been able to get rid of. So this is why we bring in another atom of the nonmetal. Okay, So you just keep adding additional metals or nonmetals, whatever you need, in order to have all the electrons given away and all the electrons accepted and have them be the same number. So we can draw it up here. Okay. Again, this is identical to the other one, so it's got seven outer electrons to begin with. But now we see a place for this other electron to transfer to that little spot there. So we've gotten rid of those two, and these each have acquired one. Everybody's happy. So we count now to write the formula. You just count how many bariums, how many chlorines, not how many electrons. I said how many of each. I drew one barium atom, but I never, ever put a subscript of one. If I mean it to be one, I just leave it like this. And I have two chlorine atoms, 
So just after the symbol for chlorine is when I put the two. And there's the formula for barium chloride. Okay? Three atoms involved, one barium with two chlorines. All right? Now, let's look at the next most complicated one. Get a little better view here. Example number two. What about barium phosphide? I chose the hardest one because I want you to see what the hardest one looks like, and then everything else will be simpler than this, okay? This one's going to involve five atoms. You will never have an ionic compound that I show you that will have more than five atoms, all right? So draw some barium like this again. Again, you need a lot of space. So there's its two outer electrons. But this time, we're going to bond it with a phosphorus atom. Remember, we changed the name phosphorus to phosphide when it's in an ionic compound. And its electrons are at 2, 8, 5. So I need to draw five outer electrons. So I'll draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? All right, let's start thinking about the transfer. So barium is still going to want to try to get rid of 2. But phosphorus is going to try to acquire three more because it only has five, but it needs three to make its outer energy level full. So this is a good start if we take this electron down here and we take this electron and we go over here. So now that gives it seven, but it's still not happy, right? So what do we do? We need another atom that can give away some electrons to phosphorus. Well, we only have barium to use. So we can draw another barium with its two outer electrons and then show that one of those electrons can complete phosphorus's outer energy level. So now if you look, we got eight around phosphorus. So it's like I'm good to go and I'm done taking any more electrons. However, we've got this barium that's only half happy because it still has another electron to give away. See what we're going to do here? We're going to draw another phosphorus with its five outer electrons. And we can now send this other electron from the second barium over to here, giving phosphorus six. And now the bariums are both happy. It's like awesome. However, we have a partially happy phosphorus atom. OK, so we're needing another barium. with two electrons to get rid of. Now, look what we got here. We got these two that this barium is going to try to get rid of. We still need two additional ones to make this second phosphorus happy. And so this is where things start to kind of finish up with everybody being happy. All six electrons here have been donated somewhere else. And we've got six electrons here that have been accepted. So everybody's happy. Now, you're not going to write a six when you write the formula. You simply stop and you count how many of each atom it took for everyone to be happy. How many bariums do you see? You write the metal one first. One, two, three. It's just a counting thing. This is why it's nice to have it on paper. How many phosphide ions? We call them ions now that they've turned into a, um, a charged, you know, it's not neutral anymore. But there's two of them. And so we put a little P2. Remember, there was no space. Um, lowercase a is really important. Any second letter in a symbol, put lowercase. And these subscript numbers represent how many of each ion it took for the whole thing to be uh, happy. So there is the formula for barium phosphide. Okay. All right. So you've seen two examples here. Sometimes it only takes one of each. For example, a barium and an oxide. Well, oxygen only needs two more, and barium is trying to get rid of two. That's a match made in heaven. So one barium will bond with one oxygen. BAO would be the formula there. You could draw that one out if you want a little practice with that. All right. But I think this is enough for now. We've gone about 10 minutes, and hopefully between this and other examples I've done for you, you can uh, figure out how to write any ionic formula that I asked you to.